Hello friends, it's me, Self-Critical Automaton, your premium ambient trance appreciator. So, uh, yeah, today we're going to be jumping into the penultimate level of Mirror's Edge. I hope you enjoy it, I hope you stick with this until the end, I hope you join me for Transistor, which is what I'll be let's playing next. I hope you go follow me on Twitter so that you can get announcements about my stream updates, because hey, I also do live streaming now. Anyway, that is actually all I need to say today, so let's jump in. to warn you off. I'm sorry. You've got to learn to let go, Faith. You remember? Like you did with your family. The runners are screwed. Icarus is just the start. And I want to live, Faith, not just survive. Why Pope? His campaign was getting unexpected support, but he got stupid. Started making threats to the wrong people. High up people. He found out about Icarus. So they had you kill him. Him or me. Sorry about Kate. Didn't know she was your sis. Don't ask, Merc. Okay? Heard all I need to hear, kiddo. Listen, Krieg says Kate's just been tried. Already? Wonders of the Swift Justice Program, huh? They found her guilty, Faith. Of course they did. Convoy's taken her off to jail in less than an hour. Drake's organizing a rifle drop near the new CCC building. I'll keep you posted. Keep going. So it's actually a lot I hate about that cutscene, uh, but I'll talk about, about that in a minute. First I want to point out that this area of the city is called Looking Glass Gardens, um, which is a reference. oh, actually, see that? That's the Shard, that's the big important building. This game was weirdly prescient in a lot of ways, not least of which was that um, there's a building called the Shard, which is very glassy and looks down over a, over a city. Um, completed in 2012, weird coincidence, I'll talk about that next chapter, because it takes place in the Shard. Uh, but yeah, before that, um, Looking Glass Gardens is, oops, that was higher than I thought, is actually a reference to the studio Looking Glass Studios, which is one of the most beloved and um, lamented studios of, of gaming history, I think. It's widely considered to be the origin of um, many very good designers, and also two of the most beloved genres, particularly genres that are beloved of people who um, appreciate games as art forms based on design particularly the immersive sim and secondarily the stealth game because Looking Glass, Glass Studios was the origin of Ultima Underworld which inspired many uh, other games in the immersive sim genre. Also System Shock, System Shock, Shock 2 being the kind of codification of that genre to it, unto itself and uh, which of course resulted in Deus Ex, uh, Dishonored, Prey, many other very well designed and genuinely beloved games. But also the Thief games, um, the first two Thief games. Put out the warehouse fire for several hours now. It is unknown how many casualties may be involved. Uh, the warehouse fire he mentions is the Pirandello, Pirandello Kruger warehouse from a couple chapters ago burning down. I don't remember starting a fire, so I think that's a hint that they're covering their tracks. Anyway, um, it's a nice little nod to Looking Glass Studio. It's one of the greatest uh, game design houses of all time, which ended far, far before its time. So, the problems with that cutscene, in my opinion, is simply that... Oh, I just want to shout out this colour palette, because um, this is what summer looks like in my mind. The feelings evoked by a nice creamy white and bright orange colour palette is relaxed summertime, sitting on concrete at the beach, eating ice cream. Anyway, uh, that's not really relevant. But, uh, yes, so the main problem I have with that cutscene is that... Um, the two characters just that drop. I'll get out to Krieg. See if you can lose him. The two characters just uh, stand happily 
in front of six men firing at them with assault rifles and they stand there for a good 30 seconds or so in a hail of gunfire without even moving and are somehow fine. I don't normally have problems with verisimilitude or anything like that but it's kind of- oh hey, he's not supposed to be there. It's kind of ridiculous. Ouch. Okay, I'm gonna die here. So, there's some problems with the pursuit cops mechanically, which I will talk about in a second, unless I die, which I will, in which case I will talk about it right now. But mainly the thing is that, um, unlike the ordinary cops in the Pirandello crew of goons, they not only uh, have every ability you have with regards to traversing the environment, they aren't um, essentially stymied by their own pathfinding, because they can freely go up and down things like here. They aren't locked to specific 2D planes. Um, but also, instead of guns, they have tasers. You can be shot with a gun without falling off a drain pipe. If you get tased while you're climbing a drain pipe, you immediately fall down. Krieg's gonna drop a rifle inside the CCC building. It's around the corner. Should give you a good view of Gage Cockroach. Which means that, based on where they spawn, it can be impossible to escape them. Fortunately, unlike us, um, they are not actually fleeing for their lives. Their lives are more important to them than their, that, to them than their jobs. So, unlike us, they will not do crazy shit like this. Where the hell did they even go? Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, Looking Glass Studios, some of my favourite... Okay. Some, uh, some of my favourite games of all time are, um... Ultimately descended from them, even if it's by different designers at different studios, basically just by their influence. Although it was also the place where some legendary designers got their starts. But... Yeah, um, as someone who appreciates games both as visually appealing and cinematically appealing works of narrative art, I also appreciate them for their pure design value, which you may have noticed by my um, constant prattling about all of the very clever ways this game is designed. Also, before I zoom on, I just want to point out, this city is incredibly heavily surveilled. It's kind of subtle, but you are never out of sight of cameras, almost never. Even these tiny balconies where there's nothing except private access to, what, a housing unit, maybe? Nobody can get up here except for you and the people who live here. And yet, camera. There's nowhere in the city you are not being observed. All of this stuff contributes to the ways in which this game is a, uh, kind of a... I mean, a satire is the wrong word, but it kind of is obsessed with the potential of the surveillance state. The negative potential, I mean. It is a critique of fascism very heavily, as I have already talked about, but it is also a, um... Trick says Krieg's just stashed the rifle. It's at the top of the atrium you're about to reach. A work that fears the panopticon. This is one of the best platforming spaces in the game. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love its unfinished nature, combined with its strong colour palette, and just the beautiful quality of light, because... While light is often used as a tool in this game, there's very little attention paid to the beauty of light itself. Except here, where we get the gorgeous morning sunlight shafting in from one side, and then the half-tones and the shadow in the centre. It's quite lovely. It's also the first vertical platforming area in the game where you really get to kind of experience flow and puzzle platforming at the same time. You are not tied to having to stop every 30 seconds to figure out where you should be he heading. You know where you need to go. You need to go up to the top. How do you get there? Do you follow the instinctual paths that you have learned to follow throughout the game up until this point? Also, you do fall down occasionally, but that's fine, because it is a puzzle platforming section. But it is the least frustrating of the puzzle platforming sections, and the most flowing one. Additionally, it's got some really good music. Partly that's because I'm trying to go for a shortcut instead of the intentional route, which is up here. What you're supposed to do is run up here, jump, bounce over to here, and then take the balance beam, which is safer, but it is slower. So, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so you've also got this lovely ambient piece in the background. A lot of people praise the music in this game, and a lot of people, when they do so, are thinking of the game's main theme, which is Still Alive by Lisa Miscavy, which was written for the game. However, Still Alive only appears in um, in full at the very end of the game. During the game, it's mentioned it uh, shows up a couple times in remixed versions. However, if you want to hear the full thing, you basically have to go to the very end. Also, um, it featured very heavily in the game's marketing materials, which is understandable because it's a really good song. Fewer people praise um, 
the rest of the soundtrack of the game, which is this lovely passive ambient electric sound. Um, it's by the Solar Fields, uh, whose actual name is uh, Magnus Bergeson, I think, and um, it often really, really well matches the tone of the game. These spaces sound how they sound. They sound like how they look, is what I meant to say, which is a very wanky thing to say, but hey, that's why you're here, right? And this is one of my favourites. In fact, I bought almost no music as a teenager because I could not afford very much things because I was not given very much money. Um, at least not compared to- oh, okay. So, that is one of the points where the semiotics of the game betrayed me. I'm used to flat walls being runnable, however that's not a flat wall, it's got a nice open space for you to get your foot stuck in. Um, but yeah, so I didn't have much in the way of music be because kind of vent near you. Quick route to the sniper position. I didn't have much uh, pocket money, generally speaking. And money, uh, music's always been really expensive, so also you can coil right into that instead of grabbing a hold and climbing up. That line about rats is a reference to an Easter egg, which I can hopefully show you in a second. Um, anyway, so I actually went and I, I after playing this game, I actually went and bought the album. Um, of the soundtrack, um, and I still have it to this day and I still listen to it. Some of them are quieter and more ambient, but that piece from that scene is just... I love it. <gasps> anyway, having decided that we want to save our sister from being um, sent to prison or possibly executed, we have decided that the way to do that most effectively and efficiently is to shoot guns at her. So, um... If you've been waiting for this game's stance on Sororicide, it's, uh, kind of ambiguous. But yeah, so this is the only time I will willingly willingly use a gun in the game, the because it's necessary. Get to it and get that convoy in your sight. Find a way of slowing it down. Try going for the engine. I'm gonna patch you into the CPF channel the convoy's using. Connors, convoy! What's your status? Over. Looking good. Route is clear. So, having done that, if you then shoot the centre of this, a giant rat is supposed to run out. There he is! Haha! -ha. What's happening? Report! Report! Over! I can't throw it in the bin, oh well. You gotta get down there. So yeah, um, I've committed to not using guns in this game because I think it's... Shit, too late. They know where you are now. Oh well, yeah, I just fired a rifle out the window. Um, I think it is just... It fits the themes of the game better. You're not supposed to be fighting, you're supposed to be escaping. Also, notice again, the painting is used to lead your eye to the right, so you need, so you realise you should flow right. And it's uh, even more subtle than usual. <laughs> well, I mean, the effect isn't subtle, but um, it's not just the fact that there is a split painting, it's the fact that there is also... Uh, it's, it's a completely different colour palette. It's generally not worth actually fighting these guys, because they will um, slow you down enough that the Pirandello go guys over there will catch you. What you want to do if you want to be quick is to drop onto this and then drop further onto this. If you drop all the way that drop is enough to kill you, however, if you're clever, they break the glass underneath you, you fall down here, and then you sprint around the corner into this. You don't actually need to fight any of those guys. It doesn't make much narrative sense, but it is um, broadly entertaining that you can just run straight past them and into a doorway, especially considering the cutscene that then starts. However, the way the game adjudicates its cutscenes is that each one is tied to the start of a chapter. For the vast majority of the game, that makes perfect sense, because what you do in the cutscene sets up what you're about to do in the chapter. However, at certain points, such as this one, um, and the end of the- and yeah, the last chapter as well, uh, it switches over and it starts finishing the narrative of the chapter in the cutscene. However, I've committed to this whole, you know, cutscene and then chapter thing based on the game's own structure so um i guess you're going to have to wait until next episode to see their reconciliation anyway that's all from me for today i hope you enjoyed this episode please remember to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description thank you so much for watching